Hey folks, uh, Mr. MathBlog here. This lesson is compare and order rational numbers. Don't forget all your lessons can be found right there at that groovy site. Okay, and then uh, there's our common core strand for our awesome teachers. And then our question here is how can we compare and order rational numbers? Okay, so we've used a, a number line to compare and order integers in the last lesson, I think it was. So we can also use the number line and other methods, we'll put in parentheses there, uh, to compare and order rational numbers that include fractions and decimals and all those groovy things. So here we go. Uh, this table shows the average January temperatures in five U.S. cities. So which city has the greater average uh, January temperature? Is it Indianapolis or is it Boise? Okay, so... Here, Indianapolis is negative 0.6 in degrees Celsius, and Boise is at negative 1. Okay. Well, one way, and this is my favorite way, one way is to use a number line. Okay. In fact, I encourage this with my students uh, that are taking high school um, and to graph these points on a number line. So let's graph the temperatures for Indianapolis and Boise. Okay. So Indianapolis is negative 0.6. Let's look at this, you guys. Here's 0. Here's negative 1. This is divided up into 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is 5. So these must be going by uh, 2 tenths. So here's 2, 4, 6, 8, and here's 10 tenths right there. So uh, Indianapolis, you guys, is going to be, uh, here's 2, 4, 6. Here's negative 6 tenths right there. I forgot which order I did that. So I did them both. Okay, and then negative 1 is Boise right there. And then uh, we did Boise with a B and Indianapolis with an I. Okay, isn't that creative? All right, so um, uh, it depends on which number is to the left. Uh, so so think as, as we move to the blank on the horizontal number line, the numbers become larger. Okay, so as we go to the right, I mean, isn't 1 bigger than 0? Isn't 2 bigger than 1? So as we go to the right, the numbers become larger. As we go to the left, the numbers become smaller. Okay, so here, as we go to the right, the numbers become larger. Whoops, let me slide that up. And so to the right, right there. Okay, so uh, negative uh, point, uh, six is to the blank of negative one. Okay, so here's negative uh, one. Here's negative point six. So negative point six is to the right of negative one right there. So the city whose temperature is furthest to the right is Indianapolis. Okay, and so Indianapolis has the greater temperature, and we'll answer that uh, when we show you a different way. Okay, so here's another way. We're going to use place value to compare the decimals. Okay, so we're going to write the temperatures with their decimal points lined up. Okay, so Indianapolis is negative uh, 0 0.6, so we'll write that right here, and then Boise is 1, or negative 1, sorry. So negative 1, we'll write it as negative 1.0, okay? So that way we can line these decimals up right there, okay? And so then uh, we can compare the digits in the ones place, okay? So the digits in the ones place, we have negative 0 and we have negative 1. So if the number is negative, including a negative sign with the digits, then um, uh, we're going to line those decimals up, okay? So 0 is to the what of negative 1, okay? So 0 is to the, uh, to the right of negative 1. Okay, so 0 is greater than negative 1. So negative 0.6 is going to be greater than negative 1. Does that make sense? Okay, and then so uh, the, the negative 0 0.6 degrees Celsius is going to be warmer than negative 1 degrees Celsius. So that means that um, Indianapolis has a greater average temperature than Boise does. Okay, a couple of ways right there. All right, so explain how we can order the, the average temperatures for uh, Boston, Philadelphia, and Syracuse from greatest to least. Okay, so we did from least to greatest. Let's do greatest to least. Okay, so what we do is locate the temperatures of, of these three cities, um, uh, Boston, Philadelphia is 2.1, so that would be right here. Remember, these go by 2 tenths, so this is 2.2, 2.3, 2.4. I'm sorry, there's 2.6, sorry. 2.2, 4, 6, 8, okay? So there's 2.1 in between 2.0 and 2.2. Uh, Anyways, and then Boise right here is at negative, negative 1. Whoops, I missed that guy right there. So, um, uh, Bo no, I'm sorry, Boston. My bad, you guys. Sorry, my bad. <laughs> A phrase to say I'm sorry you guys in California anyways and I'm just used to it with my teenagers anyways so there's a, a, a point 0.9 right there so there's point 0.8 there's a, a, a 1 right there so it's right in be between right there 
And then Syracuse is at negative 2 right there, so locate the temperatures on the number line and then list the numbers. And since we're going from greatest to least, greatest to least, then we go from right to left. So we list these numbers from right to left. So uh, 2.1 is the biggest, then 0 0.9, and then negative 2 right there, okay? This should be an S right there, not a negative 2. Getting a little bit carried away with my thinking of math right there. I was talking with my students, so I, I always think about numbers and uh, before letters, and when I'm reading stuff, if I see numbers, I zero in on those first. All right, anyways. <laughs> so uh, uh, Haley has uh, found some fossils at a dig site. A dig site is like for archaeology, and so and recorded the elevations in the table. So which object was uh, found at a lower elevation? So that means smaller. Uh, uh, the fossils for this bone right here or the fossils for the lizards right here. Okay, so we're focusing on negative three and a half and negative three and one fourth. So I'm going to shrink this up and shrink this up so we can put a vertical number line right down the middle right there. Okay. All right. So one way is to use a vertical number line. So let's graph the elevations for the for the bone and for the lizard. Okay, so the bone is at negative three and a half. So here's negative three, here's negative four. Okay, so we got to understand the number line right here. So right here looks like that's going to be negative three and a half. So this would be, they're going by fourths. Can you see these going by fourths? So uh, one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and finally four fourths, which is one right there, okay? All right, so let's do uh, the bone right here, which is at negative three and a half. I think I highlighted that. Yeah, right there and right there. There's our bone right there. And then for the lizard, it's going to be at negative three and a fourth. So there's negative three and a fourth right there for that lizard fossil, okay? And then uh, so as we move blank on the horizontal number line, the numbers become less. So as we move down they become less okay all right and then so negative three and a half which is the bone is going to be uh it's lower than negative three and a fourth on the number line right there or below right there okay all right so uh, let me back up here so that means uh since uh, the lower number right here the lower number is going to be the bone so to answer the question the fossil uh, uh, that, that has the bone right there uh, was found at the lower elevation. Okay, so we'll answer that after this right here. So another way is to use common denominators to compare those fractions. Okay, so let's write um, uh, the elevations with common denominators. Okay, now think about uh, one half and one fourth. What's a common denominator? Well, four is. So we'll just keep this as one fourth right here, and we'll change this to fourths. So if we think how many times does two go into four? It goes in there twice. So two times two. So let's multiply the one times two, and so we'll get two over four right there. You guys with me? Okay. So since the whole numbers are the same, these whole numbers negative three and negative three are the same. We only need to compare these fractions, the two fourth and the one fourth. And since the numbers have negative signs, then let, let's include these fractions. So we'll make it negative two-fourths and negative one-fourths, because we don't need to compare the whole numbers. We know they're both negatives and negatives threes, okay? So negative two-fourths is, um, is, is going to be less than negative one-fourth. And so that means uh, uh, since uh, the negative two-fourths is going to be less than the negative one-fourths right here, then that means that the three and a half, negative three and a half, is going to be less than the negative three and a fourth, okay? And I like to tell my students, negatives kind of work backwards, you guys. Three and a half is bigger than three and a fourth, but negative three and a half is less than negative three and a fourth. The bigger number is actually this guy right here, okay? So negatives kind of work backwards. I don't know if that makes sense, okay? So the fossils of the bone was found at a lower elevation than the fossil of the lizard. All right, let's try another one. Let's compare this decimal, negative uh, 0.1, which is negative 1 tenth right here, and negative 4 fifths. Okay, so let's do that right there. Okay, so there's a couple of ways. We can convert all the fractions, these fractions right here, to a decimal like this. 
or we can convert this decimal to this fraction right here like this. And we're going to do both ways right here, okay? All right, so negative, uh, let's convert, convert this guy to a fraction. Negative 0.1 is the same as negative 1 tenth right there, okay? All right, and then uh, negative 4 fifths to change that to a 10. We multiply that times 2, so let's multiply that times 2. So this is going to be negative 8 tenths right there, okay? And we already know that this is going to be negative uh, 8 tenths or negative 0.8 because here is 8 tenths, and as a decimal, it's going to be negative 0.8, okay? So now we have uh, both of them as fractions right here, and we have both of them as decimals right here. All right, let's deal with the fractions. Excuse me. <clears throat> uh, I just started teaching, and my voice is tired, you guys, so... <laughs> Anyway, so um, so uh, this negative 8 right here, now that we have both common denominators, we have them both as, um, uh, as tenths right there. So now we can just focus on these numerators right here. So this negative 8, you guys, is going to be less than negative 1 right there. So uh, that means that this fraction right here that came from negative 8 tenths, negative 4 fifths, is going to be less than this decimal, uh, negative 0.1 or negative 1 tenth right there. Negative, uh, this is one-tenth, it ends in the tenth spot. Okay, let's do that with the decimals over here, okay? So negative uh, 0.8 is still less than negative 0.1, so that means, okay, let's go back that negative four-fifths is going to be less than negative one. And if we need to, let's go ahead and use a number line right there. So here's zero, here's one, so we have one, two, three, four, five. So these are going by tenth, or... Um, uh, uh, here's two tenths, four tenths, six tenths, eight tenths. So they're going by two tenths right here. So right here will be our negative 0.1. I'm sorry, right here will be negative 0.1. This is two tenths, so this is one tenth right here. So negative one tenth is going to be right here. And then negative uh, four fifths is going to be right here because negative four fifths is negative eight tenths, which is right there. Hope I'm making sense anyways, okay? So which one's to the left? This one's to the left, so this one's smaller, okay? So negative four-fifths is going to be less than negative one right there. My favorite is the number line right there. All right, so explain how we can use a number uh, sense, to, sense to compare uh, negative uh, uh, point one and negative four-fifths. Okay, now pretend like this isn't here, but this is going to help describe this. So the closest integer to negative um, uh, point one is this zero right here. And the closest integer to negative four-fifths is this negative one right here. And since negative one is less than, since this closest integer is less than this closest integer right here, then that means negative four-fifths must be less than that negative one right there. Okay, you guys, I hope that makes sense. And take care.